What's up guys, it's River and today we're looking at my top three budget vlogging cameras. I wanted to pick three cameras that were easy to take around, hassle free to work with and most importantly required almost no work to make you look good on camera. On this list we start with a basic vlogging camera and work our way up to a more cinematic camera made for high end productions. Whatever kind of content you want to make, I have you covered. So let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly what these cameras do, exactly who they're for and most importantly which camera is right for you. Let's get into it. And just to let you guys know, there's a link down below for the best pricing on all these cameras. So the first camera on the list is the Canon G7X Mark III. This is a surprisingly compact and hassle-free camera, but it packs quite a bit of horsepower. This camera has a 20 megapixel sensor. While that may not sound like a lot, it does, however, have full HD up to 120 frames per second. That's right, you heard me. You get gorgeous Canon HD at both 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. Plus it has 4K at both 24 and 30 frames per second. And all of that with gorgeous Canon colors that make your skin tones look amazing. The blues are just the perfect hue of blues. The reds are nice and fiery. The greens are deeply saturated. Canon colors simply look awesome and you will too on this camera. This camera has a built-in lens from 24 to 100, so basically everything you need is in that lens. You get a wide shot and you get a telephoto shot, plus the aperture is between 1.8 to 2.8 depending on what focal length you're on, but that's a very fast aperture and you will do just fine in low light and you will be able to get a ton of depth of field with this camera. Now this is a smaller sensor, so you obviously won't get the same depth of field as a DSLR, but having that fast aperture of 1.8 or 2.8, you will get a lot more depth of field than another pocket size camera. Besides the colors, the other high point in this camera for me is the built-in in-body stabilization. Normally compact cameras are pretty hard to keep stable and they tend to get a lot of vibration. This camera has a really, really good stabilization and your footage will look extra smooth because of that IBIS. So I highly recommend getting this if you're going to be vlogging or walking around with this camera. Now the autofocus in this camera is a bit of a conversation. At the time of launch, the autofocus in this camera wasn't the greatest. But over time, Canon has put out constant firmware updates to make it better and better, and I expect them to keep making it better until everyone's happy with it. The autofocus isn't quite as good as a full-blown DSLR, but if you're vlogging with it, putting it down, talking in front of it kind of like this, you will be just fine. The autofocus is particularly good with faces, so as long as you're pointing it at a person, you should be just fine. However, I should note, the autofocus tends to struggle a little bit when you switch between different objects really fast. But for the most part, it's pretty good. So lastly, let's talk about design. This camera is well built, it's nice and compact, and it will last you a very long time if you take care of it. It does have an external mic input, which is key critical for a vlogger. The button layout is really ergonomical and all the buttons are just in the right place for quick and easy access. All the buttons have a nice sandpaper finish that make them much easier to work with, especially when it comes down to the smaller buttons. So the last thing I want to talk about is the flip screen. The flip screen is high definition, it has touch to focus, and it's easy to tell what's going on with that screen. The screen itself is great. The issue is it flips up to the top, not to the side. So if you put a mic on this camera, you will block your screen unless you're using a wireless mic. So the solution to that is, you have to buy a $9 attachment from Amazon that lets you stick the mic to the side of your camera. That way you don't block your screen. It's the one small letdown with a camera like this. However, I think considering the frame rates and the color signs of this camera, it's a small thing that I can easily forgive. Last but not least, no vlogging review would be done if I didn't talk about the batteries. So the batteries, they're okay. They're not particularly good. They're not particularly bad. They're kind of just middle of the road but they're pretty cheap. You can pick up a two pack with a charger for only about $35 on Amazon. So considering the battery you get with this camera, two more, you should be good to go and you should be able to vlog all day, maybe even day and a half. Overall, I think this is a really good beginner camera and probably the camera most of you guys will pick up unless you wanna get into specialty work. And if you do want a camera with a bit more horsepower or some special features, the next two cameras might just be right for you. The next camera on this list is the Canon M50. Now this will give you similar performance to the Canon G7X Mark III. However, the big, big plus of this camera is one, the screen flips to the side and two, this camera has interchangeable lenses. This camera sports an APS-C size 24 megapixel sensor that does HD up to 60 frames per second. So you do get a little bit of slow motion in there. For 120 frames per second, you have to dip down to 720p. Personally, I think today I probably wouldn't use 720p for anything. It's a little too soft and I would probably skip this camera if I was just trying to get 120 frames per second. For that, 
a Sony, and which is the last camera on the list. And this camera does have 4K, but it has a massive crop. Again, it might sound like a bad camera off the bat, but I wouldn't use this camera for 4K either. I would really recommend this camera to somebody that wants that gorgeous Canon HD with Canon colors, wants that flip screen to the side, and wants to have interchangeable lenses. So if you're sitting down like this, talking to the camera or traveling around with this camera and you wanna have specific focal lens on, this camera will do great for you. Sadly, this camera does not have in-body stabilization, but it does have digital image stabilization. It's not the greatest, but for vlogging, it will do just fine. You really won't be able to tell. The other high point of this camera for me are those gorgeous Canon colors. Having an APS-C size sensor will give you a lot of depth of field. You'll get beautiful HD. And with those gorgeous Canon colors, your skin tone will look nice. Everything you shoot around you will look nice. And you really don't have to do much color grading before you send it out to your vlog. The autofocus in this camera in HD is phenomenal. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus and it's very much just set it and forget it when it comes to face tracking. You can just point the camera at yourself. You can be completely confident that it will get you in focus. You won't have to kind of turn on the camera and be like, am I in focus? No, none of that. You just set it and forget it. You turn the camera on and it will catch focus very easily. You can whip this around to different objects and it will hold up and keep track with you easily. However, that dual pixel autofocus goes away in 4K. So if you're planning to use this camera to vlog in 4K, I would not recommend it. However, I do think the 4K in this camera could be a useful tool if used correctly. It could be really used for time lapses and if you want to set up a wide interview shot and then crop in for different reaction shots, that would work too. Lastly, let's talk about the body and design. So I really like the body on this camera. It's not quite as small as a compact camera, so it's not gonna fit in your pocket, but it still feels small enough and hassle-free that I feel like I can just pick it up and go. The body itself is really well built. It's nice and robust, and it kind of almost has that DSLR feel where I just like holding it in my hand. And the big, big benefit of this camera is that the flip up screen is to the side, so it does not block your mic. So you can easily mount a mic to the top, see yourself on the side, put a Gorilla Pot, and you have a full blown vlogging setup. The only drawback that I can really think of in this camera is probably the lack of 120 frames per second, but I have to mention this camera actually is cheaper than the G7X Mark III. This camera's only $599 with a card and a lens. The battery is a little bit better than the G7X Mark III, though it's not amazing. I'd say it'd probably last you three to four hours on a single charge, but again, I have you covered. For two pack with a charger on Amazon is only about $45, so pick two of those up there, the one that comes in the bag, and you'll be good for a whole day. Overall, this is a really solid camera, and you'll get more of a cinematic feel with your videos than the G7X Mark III. This camera I recommend to someone who's gonna be doing a mix of vlogging with cool montages, slow-mo shots. This is a really good beginner camera for somebody like that. But what if you want a camera that has a lot of horsepower, great autofocus, small size, and you want great colors? This next camera is probably the camera you're looking for, and it's my favorite camera on this list, the Sony A6400. So in my opinion, this is probably one of the best budget vlogging cameras on the market today. It has a ton of horsepower, it has great frame rates, it does 4K, that is very sharp, great colors, it's actually got the updated Sony Venice colors, and it's really good in low light, and all that for under $1,000. Yep, that's right, for $9.98, you get the camera, the SD card, and the lens. This camera is specifically for people who wanna make cinematic vlogs. If you wanna make content that's a mix of your face, slow motion montages, intense color grading, then this camera is gonna be perfect for you. A good example is someone like Sam Calder. This camera has a 24 megapixel sensor and does gorgeous HD images all the way up to 120 frames per second. It comes packed with a ton of cinema profiles like Hybrid Log Gamma, S-Log2, Sony Cinema. Basically, any kind of cinema profile you want, it's in this camera. Any kind of coloring you wanna do with this camera, it's available to you. Also, this camera shoots pretty much everything at 100 megabits per second. So that is plenty of room in post to really play around with your footage because you have a very robust data codec. Also, something I quickly have to mention, this camera has phenomenal colors. In the past, you've probably heard me say, Sony doesn't have very good colors, but this camera actually has the new updated version of Sony colors that come directly from Sony's new cinema camera known as the Sony Venice, which right now, and I'm getting nerdy here, is the camera they're using to shoot Avatar 2 and 3. So if you're worried about color science, this camera completely has you covered. Personally, I think it's a really nice feature to see and Sony's finally competing with Canon when it comes to colors. And of course, there's no way I could talk about this camera without mentioning low light. Sony cameras are generally known for having great low light performance and they're actually leading the industry when it comes to low light performance. This camera has clean ISO all the way up to 20 to 25,000 ISO and that's really useful. If you're someone that's on the road constantly fighting with tough lighting conditions, 
that low light performance is really gonna come in handy. Especially as a vlogger where you're just going to random places all the time, that low light performance is really gonna come in handy. And I think low light is one of the biggest selling points of this camera. Next, let's talk about autofocus. When it comes to autofocus, Sony is literally ahead of the industry by five years. The autofocus in this camera is very much just set it and forget it. It's actually AI based eye tracking and face tracking. So if it comes down to a face, this camera will not miss focus and it can easily switch between objects even in fast run and gun environments. I could probably make an entire video about how good the autofocus is, but it works well in low light. It works well with faces. It's really good. It's very fast. It's very reliable. This autofocus has everything you need. I promise you will not be disappointed. Lastly, let's talk about the design of the camera. The camera is nice and small and very well laid out when it comes to buttons. The one thing I appreciate about Sony cameras is that there's a ton of room to customize your button instead of different shortcuts. The ergonomics of this camera are hard to get wrong because there's so much customization available to you. The Sony menus are still super complicated and you still have to flip through 20 pages. That's just typical of Sony menus. But this camera does have something called My Menu, where if you go to the end of the menus, you can set up a custom menu screen for things that you access often or you want to get to quickly. Although personally, as a camera nerd, I appreciate the deep menus and I really like being able to just get right in there and customize every last bit of my camera. However, there's two things in this camera design-wise that I wish were better. One, it doesn't have a headphone jack and if I'm going to pay almost $1,000, I want to be able to monitor my audio. I was really disappointed that there wasn't a headphone jack in this camera. Second, the flip up screen. Now Sony doesn't do flip up screens to the side, but again, this has the same problem as the G7X Mark III. The flip up screen goes to the top and while it's really good, touch autofocus, I can see myself well, if I mount a mic to the top of the camera, it blocks the screen. So you again have to grab a $9 attachment from Amazon that lets you glue your mic to the side of your camera and therefore you'll have usable audio. But if you're using a wireless mic, you really don't have to worry about this and you can easily put your receiver at the bottom of your camera. So lastly, the batteries. Sony batteries are still Sony batteries, small camera, small battery. But I have you covered. On Amazon, you can pick up a two pack for 30 bucks with a charger, but I would probably recommend picking up four of these batteries with two chargers because Sony batteries tend to go pretty quickly, especially in slow motion mode. And Sony batteries don't last that long to begin with, but I can easily forgive the small and really, really small battery life considering all the things that this camera does. It does 120 frames per second, really good in low light, great images, great colors. Honestly, I'm okay with the battery. Also, this camera isn't officially on the list, but I wanted to do an honorable mention. This camera is the DJI Osmo Pocket. This isn't exactly a camera, but I would recommend picking this camera up as maybe a side tool because it gives you such smooth motion with the built-in gimbal, it does panoramas, it does face tracking and it does all these weird movements in 120 frames per second plus it has 4k at 60. it's a really interesting tool to kind of complement your vlogs for 3.99 i definitely recommend picking it up if you have the cash but i wouldn't recommend using this as your main vlogging camera it just has a little too many things to fiddle with hey guys thank you so much for checking out our video on the top three budget vlogging cameras if you are interested in these cameras there's a link in the description down below for the best pricing on these cameras and of course, if you have any questions about these cameras whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. Last but not least, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me figure out what kind of content you guys like, what kind of content I should be putting out going forward. Thanks so much, guys. Until next time.